Ну, мы продолжим. Center for Hemotherapy and Radiation uh, Therapy, uh, Belarus, Dr. Istomen. I represent uh, Scientific and Practical Center for Oncology and Medical Radiology, uh, uh, which is located in Belarus, in the city of Minsk. Uh, I'm going to speak about uh, the development of hypothermia in our uh, center, about what we are dealing with. Помогите, а? Да. The center has nine scientific department, 15 clinical departments. We have more than 700 uh, uh, people in our staff, and uh, we have uh, PhD in medicine, doctors of medicine. We have everything for uh, radio diagnostics, radiotherapy. We have department for chemotherapy. And uh, we have Department for Intensive uh, Methods of uh, Treatment. Uh, my department inc include chemotherapies, radiotherapies. Uh, we have a sector for photodynamic and hyperthermal therapy and uh, a department for resuscitation and intensive methods. We are de uh, dealing with studies. Uh, uh, and we are dealing with mod animal models, study cells, dealing with culture, and we have uh, uh, 832 wards, 12 wards uh, for resuscitation. We know uh, the problems associated uh, with the treatment of malignant tumors, metastases, uh, 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 recurrences, uh, uh, non-responding to chemo and homotherapy, to immunotherapy, uh, why uh, tumors are sensitive to uh, temperature, its development of vessels, agesia of thrombocytes, defects uh, of intratumor, uh, blood flow, which supports uh, or contributes into wash off uh, of uh, uh, the uh, warmth in the tumor. It allows us to heat the tumor to up to necessary si uh, uh, si uh, toxic therapy, cytotoxic therapy uh, without overheating normal tissues. Uh, Hypothermia causes activation of macrophage killers. Uh, we know about uh, immunological action of cytokines, and we know about immunogenesis uh, and its enhancement uh, through connection of HSP and dendrite cells. Denaturation of um, proteins, another target of studies uh, when it's uh, high than 40 degrees, uh, which results in changes of the molecular stru structures of cytoskeleton membrane and results in destruction of enzymes uh, which uh, participate in synthesis in reparation of DNA. And uh, when we create artificial uh, situations, we can 
uh, deal with regulation and velocity of all, uh, all metabolic process, pH, for example. When we reduce it selectively, we have lactate that is building up, we inhibit uh, blood flow, and we get uh, uh, death of uh, tumor cells. Uh, potential, th therapeutic potential is based on acidosis, not enough perfusion, hypoxia, anoxia in the tumor. How, how, and we, of course, do not forget about anaerobic type of metabolism. We create artificial hyperglycemia, and uh, hypothermia could enhance uh, efficacy of chemotherapy and uh, we change pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamic of drugs, uh, medications and drugs uh, with a linear increase of cytotoxicity with elevation of uh, temperature. Uh, we speak about threshold uh, elevation between 37 and 42 C. Uh, we know about the uh, cytotoxicity here. We elevate uh, a little bit the situation, not higher than 42, 43, and we know uh, the anti-tumor action is going up. Then there are drugs. Uh, uh, when cytotoxicity do not change at 37, 45, uh, high, hypothermia with a m mitomycin, C, nitroso uh, elements, cysteplatin, and so on, indications for common hypothermia. Generalized uh, severe forms of tumors when traditional methods are not effective or they have no prospect. Uh, non-operable uh, forms and when we have to turn them into the status when they could be operated in or uh, malignancies where uh, we are dealing uh, well, uh, non, uh, when, uh, with a situation when tumors do not respond to conventional uh, chemo radiotherapy patients. Sarcomas of the third, fourth stage of soft tissues, metastases, uh, recurrences, melanoma, uh, third, fourth, uh, uh, recurrences, metast metastasis after previous treatments, uh, bones, uh, sarcoma, uh, renal cell, uh, carcinomas uh, with a distant metastasis, non resectable tumors of liver, breast cancer uh, with a distant metastasis, uh, contraindications. It's, uh, Karnovsky scale, uh, non uh, worse than 70%, uh, cachexia, TB in active stage, uh, concomitant diseases like diabetes and others when we're dealing with high risk of bleeding, lo uh, localization in the area of the neck and head, and a uh, couple of others, cytopenia, for example. Uh, background for development of this method. Manfred for Ardenne. Much could be told about him, but a concept that he developed in the 60s is applied right now all over the world, in all countries. Uh, why am I impressed by uh, this personality? It's private laboratory. During the Second World War, uh, he was dealing with a uh, urine uh, depletion. He joined the Red Army after the victory. Uh, Fifteen tons of uh, uh, uranium, and uh, in the city of Sukume, he was de uh, depleting uh, uranium and participated in the atomic projects that were under development in the Soviet Union. He actually was in captivity, but in 1953 he was awarded uh, Stalin's uh, uh, prizes for his contribution into the development of this atom atomic project. 
Then he returned to Germany, got back his property, and he opened a private institu uh, institution. He started dealing with biology, medicine, and he developed multi-stage cancer therapy. It included hyper, hyper methods, immune methods, chemical methods, and so on. He opened private hospital and tried to treat patients, first results were not that impressive. And uh, uh, he visited Soviet Union, our country, several times. He wrote a book. And uh, it was titled Happy Life for Science and Tech uh, and uh, uh, Technical Aspects. And he addressed his book to young scientists. Uh, and uh, called on them to ask themselves how to optimize, how to en enhance uh, the results of uh, your scientific work. In five, six years, after he started dealing with the aspects, he came to our country because we do not have the side effects here that he was facing in our republic, in our institute, and he was happy to find out that we were dealing uh, with uh, the aspects of hypothermia. He has three sons. Uh, they uh, are involved in the same area of science. Uh, Director of our center, Alexandrov, and Minister of Health, Savchenko. The uh, used to inspire us to continue uh, developing along uh, the lines we uh, are discussing. Simon Fratkin, another uh, person who uh, was in charge of an implementation practical implementation of the new newly developed methods and due to his effort we were awarded state a prize in our republic uh, uh, here we used water and hot water was used uh, for the patient uh, the core the body uh, was heated uh, with the use of water, but we realized that only the superficial layers could be uh, heated, and we had many uh, side effects. And uh, now we use uh, radio frequencies and 13 to 15. Uh, 0 0.056 megahertz Yachta 5. This is our equipment. It's uh, used in ob it, it's uh, being developed. Uh, it's been produced in openings and uh, teach our local uh, product. And this one Yachta 5 or Yacht 5 allowed to deal with a general and local uh, heating. Right now, uh, we have a new uh, equipment for general and local one. It's a, a generator, uh, elastic membrane, six channels for measuring temperature. Uh, it's quite accurate uh, and the automatic control of the power of uh, uh, the radiation and uh, it's, everything is being controlled by a special safety system that is inbuilt into this uh, equipment. Uh, uh, anesthetic, anesthesia is a very good multi-channel temperature control, planning of hyperthermal impact, graphic uh, representation, and system of control of the complex. The uh, main indications, uh, they are here in this slide. Uh, we use those figures. This is the status of the patient, Karnovsky scale, uh, scale 400, 450 uh, water, uh, 
uh, temperature is elevating very slow, 0.1 degree per minute. Uh, after 35, 40 minutes, uh, we achieve the necessary regime. Uh, we provide cool air to cool uh, the head of our patients. Temperature in the IG is uh, quite uh, acceptable and normal hyperglycemia it's uh, 30 millimole per liter and uh, uh, intestine temperature 42.5 as i said uh, 150 sessions of general hypothermia per annually usually that's what we do Complications, uh, toxic uh, malus, suppression, uh, vomiting, sickness, uh, uh, nasal bleeding, uh, cardiovascular arrhythmic, arrhythmic uh, events, uh, uh, hypothenia, neurological one, trophic uh, burns, and durations of soft tissues. Uh, and rates, um, it's difficult to predict them. It could be more often in uh, women with obesity, uh, uh, devious syndrome, problems uh, with the calculation. Six pa patients uh, died, and we provide 3,500 sessions. Uh, one uh, or four uh, died of. Uh, uh, respiratory syndrome and one died of impairment of brain uh, blood circulation, one died of acute liver uh, failure. Um, uh, we have uh, specific patients here in this table. Uh, it's uh, ca uh, cancer of kidney. Uh, it's a local and regional dissemination of the process. You can judge about the methods of treat treatment. There are those who had have operation pre-op uh, radiation, one group uh, operation uh, and radiation afterwards, and those who had operation uh, chemo uh, radiation and hyper hyperthermal therapy. The figures are in the table. Regarding the frequency of distant metastasis in such patients, we uh, classify them into those with local dissemination, uh, thrombe in venous system, metastasis in the regional lymph nodes, uh, those who had operation, then hypoglycemia, uh, uh, hyperthermal treatment, and radiations. Uh, they were comparable, all of them. Survival uh, with invasion of tumor into uh, the uh, liver and vena cava. Uh, uh, hip, uh, hip, uh, Thermal treatment, uh, hypoglycemia uh, as a complex, uh, statistically very inspiring survival, five, five years survival. Same data we get for patients with metastasis in the regional lymph nodes. Other group, another group, uh, it's uh, uh, 197, a renal cell carcinoma, surgical group, combined group, uh, it's pre-op radiation, operation then, then pre-op radiation with embolization, uh, then radiotherapy, thermochemotherapy you know, with Dr. Rubisan, and uh, then uh, operation, and then again two, three sessions of uh, general hypothermal treatment. And you can judge about the number of general, uh, general quantity of sessions of hypothermal treatment that we used. Uh, 
a survival. Now patients with uh, sarcoma of soft tissues, low differentiation ones, uh, local situation, aspiration, and then hyperthermal treatment with hypoglycemia and chemotherapy. Second group, local uh, hyperthermal approach without general one, aspiration, and then just aspiration, and with radiotherapy and chemotherapy. The group in which operation was uh, uh, followed with local, uh, it followed uh, uh, hypothermal treatment and then hypoglycemia. Here we have better results. It's obvious a significant difference in uh, difference in cons uh, in comparison with other groups. Uh, relapse free. Survival among soft tissue sarcoma patients was significantly higher with a combination of local hypothermia in combination with uh, uh, chemotherapy hyperglycemia was observed there, so if compared to other groups. I suppose something is wrong with this remote control. Excuse me. So the surgical volume in patients with soft tissue sarcoma shows that organ sparing surgery and the percentage of it was much higher after the combined treatment of chemo and hypothermia or radio and hypothermia. The extremity amputation was much smaller in percents. Survival. Among patients with peritoneal sarcomas, uh, uh, low differentiated, 39 patients who, after surgery and chemotherapy as well as radiotherapy, we conducted 122 sessions of hypothermia, one year survival among them, and two year survival is on the slide, and they had statistically significant difference. This is Ismail Zadeh data. In children with soft tissue sarcoma, Ewing sarcoma, renal cell uh, cancer, osteogenic sarcoma, 71 patients from 6 to 16.5 years. Uh, general hypothermia was used as adjuvant to standard uh, therapy, full and partial regression in 15 patients, which accounts for 75 percent, and five year survival accounts for 54 percent in 37. General hypothermia was used as salvage therapy. There were not uh, responders to standard treatment or relapses. And five-year survival accounts for 15% in this group. Apart from having the, uh, the machine for general hypothermia, we also purchased hypothermic system Celsius TCS. At the moment, it is under approval. And it's for regional hypothermia with a length of wave the same uh, with a frequency of 13.56 megahertz. And it allows us to work up to the world standards, which also means that we are ready to take part in international projects, international protocols, some contacts, conferences, and so on in this direction. From the previous talks, most probably you have heard how important it is to uh, have the quality control of appropriate temperature, appropriate imaging quality. From Van der Zee, um, uh, talk, I also heard uh, the, about the technical process, which also facilitates the efficacy of hypothermia. Nonetheless, when I see in YouTube this particular picture or even video, I am shocked because the patients from that centers come to us, come to our clinic. Can we have this video on? 
This is not hypertermia. This is something, this is a research and development institute they call themselves of hypertermia. Just look at it. There is no sound, though. The whole of the procedure takes 20 minutes. When we speak about the development of technical uh, of technical development, actually, there must be some sound. I must apologize. There must be sound in the video. He speaks about apoptosis in uh, just uh, dipping the patient for 20 minutes in a bath, which is inappropriate. This is the water temperature, and this is camo uh, agent, uh, camo therapeutic agent introduction, if, if I'm not mistaken. They must be sound. No, okay, that, then let's finish it. And my final slide, if it is possible. Thus, what is most important about the development of hypertermia? This is not only the technical progress that we are to use in order to create quality temperature mode, because only then you can achieve certain effects and efficacy of treatment. and. Uh, only this will allow us to be satisfied, both us physicians and the doctors, and we should not uh, be splashing the baby with the water. Any questions? Sergei Vasilievich, you're welcome. This is out of the microphone. Out of the microphone. The speaker is not using the microphone. We cannot translate because the speaker is not using the microphone. I must apologize, cannot translate because I cannot hear it. Uh, that is why I have the first question to you. How you, in different variants like hypertermia, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy, how you measured the temperature in the target area, especially taking into account that you had several settings. Unfortunately, the this yield uh, that we used uh, from uh, f uh, from Fresga that was in contact invasive method of temperature measurement in the general hypertermia. We measure rectal temperature in the ear, and at the moment there are machines which allow us to deal with MRI. At the moment we don't have it in our hands. And I have another question to you. Kindly tell me. In a number of slides, you demonstrated combination of radiotherapy, chemotherapy, and hypertermia. And how did you switch? How did you calculate the uh, dose of radiotherapy? It's quite clear that after hypertermia, the biological of 10 gray, biological efficacy of 10 gray would be different uh, from the 10 gray without hypertermia. So how did you take into account this factor? Well, the clear program of how we can downregulate the dose of radiotherapy, in fact, is not there. But it was just some uh, several uh, um, it was somewhat lower, but I, we don't have particular parameters of how much the hypertermia allows us to downregulate the exposure in radiotherapy. Excuse me, 
In a number of patients which you demonstrated here with soft tissue sarcoma, the radiotherapy, it was not big dose, high dose, but it was done before surgery or post-surgery only. As a matter of fact, before surgery, especially in uh, renal cancer, no, 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 not renal cancer, before surgery, as a matter of fact, and uh, in, a, in some of patients, if it is not a radical surgery with further hypothermia, and there was radiation therapy after, if the dose allowed us. You know, we've come across the following situation. If um, there is even a small dose, both we and Americans uh, made a number of publications about it, that if you do a radiotherapy before surgery in soft tissue sarcoma, I'm not talking about the renal tumors at the moment, there could be very severe complications as a result. In a regular dose even of some 40 gray, for instance, without any hypothermia, of course, the complication rate amounted to 35%. This is very high. And uh, there were even such complications when we needed to, um, uh, which uh, resulted in uh, extremity amputation. So did you take this into account when calculating the dose in order to avoid unforeseen uh, results? Yes, from our experience of soft uh, tissue sarcoma treatment, it uh, first of all depended on the machine, on the depth of uh, thermal application, and if it was local hypothermia, then it was uh, 460 megahertz with a depth of about 4 degrees, and if the patient came with a sarcoma uh, exceeding this depth, then we uh, just res uh, the, we uh, came across other problems. So we just individualized our approaches to each of the patients depending on its individual response to treatment. If uh, there were no complications, then the radiotherapy uh, was done to its full. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Yes, you're welcome. Um, here, the hypothermia system which is used is a capacitive system, and the depth of the hypothermia system in this situation is small, as you mentioned. And Dr. Reinmiller had shown the difference between the radiative, radiative and the capacitive hypothermia system. And if you have a retroperitoneal or the visceral tumor, so you have a very low penetration of the electromagnetic wave in the tumor and so the effectiveness of the hypothermia in the such huge tumor of soft tissue sarcoma is limited. Rainer, help me please. With sarcoma. Да, нет, если можно, что, что нужно ответить по саркомам? Что спрашивал? Uh, he just made a comment that uh, there is a little bit of skepticism, skepticism because you work with a capacitive system and he is a physicist by his background and as a physicist he is quite skeptical about achieving uh, such temperature inside the tumor uh, suboptimal from his viewpoint i quite agree and only now i can say that receiving this 42 celsius machine or system we can guarantee more or less homogeneous um, um, temperature inside the tumor. And now we are uh, ready for the randomized studies. Before that, we had just individual approach to each of the patients depending on the tolerability, on individual parameters, and we had different capacities and so on and so forth and different parameters. At the moment, having regional uh, system with a depth of uh, up down to 20 centimeters, we actually feel satisfied, more satisfied at least. Any other comments? Uh, 
my question may be uh, somewhat not very much relevant to the topic, but I would like to ask you to assess such thing as magnet hypothermia by means of magnet biocomposites or magnet particles and talk about uh, its efficacy and usefulness. Several centers, in fact, have been dealing with this. There are certain research projects ongoing, but mainly we are discussing the delivery. In Belarus, there is a problem of um, uh, there is a problem of uh, malignancies, malignant tumors of the brain. Uh, we have uh, growth in morbidity, and uh, the center started specializing in this type of tumors. There is there are also projects of um, delivery of pharmaceuticals to the brain tissue. Also, um, just uh, enhancing the particles. There is also a sphere magnet hypothermia. Our Academy of Medical Sciences announces uh, that they are capable of doing it when we introduce ferromagnetics and the, they uh, penetrate the electric field. And there is a fantastically even heating process. But all these projects are at the stage of experiment at the moment. They are just pilot projects. They have some prospects, but they are not approved yet. I suppose when we overcome the crisis, they will definitely be studying ferromagnetics and hypothermia. But certain publications, uh, purely academic, are already on the scene. Any other questions? What you have just mentioned is of high interest to me because we have also been dealing with brain tumors and uh, we study mainly radiation therapy. Officially, in uh, my country, do we have um, uh, approvals for ferromagnetics, introduce it into the tumor and for further radiotherapy? In Belarus, it is not allowed, it is not approved. And what actually we are using at the moment in these patients is just first phase of clinical trials. This is sonophotodynamic therapy. And at the moment, we just have glioblastoma relapse patients. We're having this Belarus photolone photosensibilizer. Uh, and during the surgery, it overcomes BBB, this blood-brain barrier. And it accumulates uh, selectively in the lesion. And then we have ultrasound irradiation in order to improve the penetration of this uh, agent and then laser irradiation exacerbates this agent. We treated 10 patients out of them. All of them were relapse glioblastoma and uh, we have exhausted all the other methods like temozolabite, cisplatin, cisplatin um, uh, in tablets and plates. And uh, six of them are still alive for 13 months. From six to 13 months is uh, the survival. This is new direction. At the moment, we have uh, publications from the Southeast Asia, but all of them are just pilot experiments, and we are first to use this in clinical practice. Ferromagnetics, the ferromagnetics for the brain. I've never come across this in clinical practice yet.